Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Moore's and Blue. Hope everybody had a great July 4th weekend. <laughs> I always do because I'm a fireworks kind of guy, you know what I mean? So I had some friends and family, as you guys saw from the previous episode a week ago or so. Uh, had a great time with fireworks. Um, this was a week ago because I'm ahead by <laughs> five episodes or something like that on my scheduled timeline here. Anyway, guess you're wondering why, or maybe you're not, all four of my cars are in the driveway because my town of Huntington sends out a notice to all the residents saying that, hey, we're going to be street sweeping your neighborhood in the next five days. Well, three days have passed since then because it was a Saturday, a Sunday, and Monday is considered a holiday because 4th of July fell on a Sunday. So it's been three days. They got to come and sweep the uh, streets at least the next two days. In the meantime, I had all four of my cars in the driveway. I can't get out of my garage with anything. So today's gonna be kind of a challenge because I need to test and see if this thing will go forward and backwards. The whole issue with this tractor, the reason why Nick from Bellport gave it to me was because there's a variable transmission issue where it bucks. So that tells me that there's an issue with the variable drive or they call it a CVT transmission by MTD. This is a Toro, but MTD makes them for Craftsman and Toro. And MTD, of course. MTD, Cub Cadet, Yard Machines, Yard Man, uh, Troy Built. That's all their brands. Uh, Bolins, too, I believe. Uh, anyway, so. I got my double stack pulley here, see? And uh, it's kind of like the MTD kind. Um, I have about five or six pulleys. What I'm a little concerned about is this. So the stock drive belt on this is a 5 eighths by 90 and a half belt. That takes it to the transmission um, pulley. On the transmission pulley, apparently it's a double stack. So the other part of the pulley is a shorter one that's like 40 inches that goes around the variable drive, okay? Um, I don't know. Every pulley, every double step pulley I have is this size. I don't even know if a 5 eighths will fit on here. You know what I mean? Uh, I remember that um, Nick gave me the pulley, but it looked just like this one. How do you fit a 5 eighths on that? You know what I mean? Will the 5 eighths belt even get into the grooves there? Or is it just gonna sit on top of this like that? You know, so that's a little confusing. Also, I can't get this uh, double stack pulley onto the uh, crankshaft without removing the deck. Either way, I have to remove the deck anyway because um, I need to flip it on its side and check out the situation with the pulleys. As you know from previous two episodes, we finally did get this engine running. It's a rebuilt engine by me. Let's just try it. It's been sitting here for about three days. Starts up great, runs really well, idles really well. Sounds pretty smooth too. Doesn't hesitate, doesn't surge. Pretty stoked about it. I'm pretty sure there's some Earl inside that muffler. So that, that needs to be burned off eventually, you know what I mean? But we do have to figure out whether or not this thing goes forward and backwards. Can't test that until I remove the deck because you can't get the double stack pulley on with the deck on it, you know? So I'm going to lie on the floor and just check out what the connections look like. And then we'll put the double stack pulley on. Uh, put the belts over the pulley if we can. I just know I'm going to have issues with the double stack pulley. And then uh, we'll flip it on its side and just check out the situation before we test it. <laughs> Got to change out of my slippers shirt. Can't get that beautiful thing dirty, huh? So we're going to try to remove the deck. 
So I can flip this on the side, we can see everything that's going on on the bottom. We can study the transmission, the, the way the belts are, the pulleys, and all that stuff. Okay, I gotta admit, um, that was one of the easiest deck removals ever. It's so easy. Uh, the front has a bar like that, and that loops right over here. This and that, right? That's it. Then there's these two pull pins right there that releases the hangers from that hole there. That's it. Uh, there's that engagement cable that goes in here and then the spring goes onto here onto the uh, tensioner pulley uh, it was really easy um, one two three and the spring four four connections boom this thing's off uh, easier to do it is if you raise once you disconnect everything you raise the height so that the hangers move upwards so it clears you can just pull this out so there it is right there. Uh, immediately right off the bat, I just know I'm gonna have problems with it because um, this is the deck belt, which is fine, right? But I know that, and this is a half, half inch, right? Um, the drive one is 5 eighths. It's so thick. It's like that thick. How's it gonna fit on the pulley? You know what I mean? Also, when I noticed, when I removed this, right? If you'd look at the, um, the way the belt is routed, yeah, so I don't know if the deck belt is run correctly, honestly, because look, that's not supposed to be around there. That's not gonna work, you know? You know what I mean, right? That's not, that's not supposed to be around here. Look, you can't even turn the damn thing. Okay, I know for sure that that belt is on the wrong side because you can see the rub on the inner part of that cylinder, see? So you know that that belt was on the inner part of that cylinder, not on the outer part. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to remove that nut and slip that belt on this side instead of the other. Finally, this bolt, this nut is dusty. There you go. Now the belt is on the other side of this stud. I just have to find another nut like this to replace it. So is it possible that that was the reason why the transmission was bucking? Because this belt was on the other side of that? Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Because if this is not moving well, it causes resistance to the transmission. Therefore, if the variable speed is sensing that it needs to go a certain speed, and yet this is connected to the uh, double stack pulley, and it's and it's being held up by this belt being on the wrong side of this uh, stud. Could it cause it possibly to catch and then 
release and therefore you have that surging kind of a feeling. I hope that that was the cause of the bucking, you know? But we'll find that out uh, as soon as I tilt that tractor to its side. Because right now, this is golden right here. See how smooth that is now? Before this thing was on the other side, therefore res uh, causing resistance so that um, it's not easily movable. That? Look at that. That is smooth. Like I said, these the belt routing for the MTDs, terrible. Here we go guys, it's on its side. We can check out the situation. You see how thick that belt is? Look how thick that belt is, five eighths. I don't know. I don't, I don't see how that's going to go over a pulley. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess it could. I'm going to study this a little. So I've tried to put this pulley on, and it doesn't seem like it's going all the way in. I might have the wrong pulley. And if you look at that, the belt how is the belt gonna clear that the belt's gonna rub against the keepers it's too thick I need to find one that has a smaller top pulley is what it is this doesn't seem right I'm gonna have to whip this pulley out I went and got uh, four more pulleys out um, they all look about the same some have that uh, spacer on the top some don't This one, the diameter is smaller. I think I have the same one on here now. And it, and I got it routed correctly, I believe. I don't know, I still think that that belt is too thick, 5 eighths, you know? But uh, I checked the specs and it is 5 eighths by uh, 90 and a half belt. And it's, looks like it's routed correctly too. I know. I put a bungee cord to hold this up so it doesn't drag and I have the uh, cable routed above so it won't drag. I'm going to put it back down again and we're going to start her up see if it moves forward and backwards. Of course I only have this amount of space between the van and the uh, snow plow. That's the amount of space I have to test forward and backwards. That should be enough. Okay, here we go.
So as you guys saw, it uh, it doesn't go forward, but it goes backwards. And the uh, belt was smoking in the front, you know? I don't know. It's so difficult to figure this out. I'll have to study this for a while. So I've studied it a little more. Uh, I'm going to go inside and look on the internet about this and watch a video on how this barrel drive works. I'm going to jack this up in the back and I'm just going to start it up and just look at the way the wheel moves, you know? while it's jacked up in the rear. I just need it off the uh, floor. Try to balance myself so that that's going to be difficult to do to balance, you know? That's not going to work. Accidents will happen that way. That, that might work. I just lean on this side. Is this off? It's off. starts up easy huh I'm gonna have to go watch some videos on how this uh, transmission works I got you upside down underneath the carriage I'm on top of the tractor I'm gonna try to videotape what's going on <laughs>
you guys think? You know, you get a better idea about what's going on down there with the camera down there. Uh, there was a noise where it was kick, 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 right? I was wondering what that noise was, but watching the video, it looks like the belt was loose. You know, the long part that goes on the right side, that vibrates a lot uh, at certain times. But then once you step on the thing all the way down, it seems to tighten up and the sound goes away. And honestly, you know, being, on, uh, being the wheels are lifted up in the air, it seems to work okay when it's up in the air. I tried putting my hand on it to stop it, and because it's not under load, right? Uh, the wheels being the posi traction, you know, you touch one, the other one stops, you know, you rotate one one way, the other one goes the other way, you know? They both have to be on the ground with load for it to properly be tested. It being on the air like that is not really a good test, but uh, I sprayed a lot of uh, penetrating oil, and I shouldn't do this because it's belts, right, and pulleys, but the Vara Drive pulley, where it's the top one, there's a middle one and a bottom one, the middle one's supposed to move up and down. I was concerned that maybe the middle one was seized, you know, but then after watching the video, I had sprayed some penetrating oil on that shaft so that if it was seized, running it, moving it around, letting it soak, the thing might unseize itself. But I think I saw that the middle one was actually moving up and down. So maybe it's not seized. Um, I'm gonna have to watch and do some more research on how the Vera Drive CVT transmission works on these MTDs because uh, it's so complicated, you know? Uh, if anything, I have another Vara Drive transmission. I think it's the same thing. Not the transmission, but the Vara Drive pulley. The three pulley uh, assembly. I have another one from another um, MTD tractor, you know. I don't know if it's the same, but uh, like I said, I'll do some more research on it. But uh, for us today to remove the deck, to uh, fix the way the belt was routed, you know, <laughs> that wasn't going to work, you know. So I... I'm pretty sure this is the way it's done, you know. The belt was on the inner part of that stud, not the outer part, because the outer part was making the belt too tight and was rubbing, you know. So now it looks like it's okay. So I think the, de I think the deck is fine, you know, and it was easy to remove too. Uh, just figuring out the transmission now. At least we know it goes backwards fine. Uh, forward, not really, but uh, like I said, I'll do some more research on it. But uh, how about the engine? Starts up great, runs great. I'm, I mean, I'm stoked about the engine. And it looks like we might have burned off most of the oil that was in the muffler because it stopped smoking. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'll do some more research. If you guys have any insight to this, if you guys are experts at the uh, CVT transmission, what do you think is wrong? Uh, let me know what, what your uh, suggestions are. Uh, I don't know too many people that know this transmission well because it's pretty complicated, you know? And it's one of the toughest belts to change. Which is why I think a 5 8 belt is good because there's, there's nothing short of pliers that will break a 5 8 belt. It's really on there, it's strong, you know? And I think it's because if you break a belt, what a nightmare it is to, to take it off and change it, you know? Anyway, I'll leave in the comments if you guys know what's up with this thing, all right? Thanks a lot, we'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. next time on mowers and blowers hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell that way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them remember to follow my instagram and facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.